when you look at what AI's development has experienced over the past few years, how would you characterize it, the nature of this stage of development? As we know, AI has been with us, you know, for decades already. Right. Uh, yeah, well, the, obviously, you know, uh, last 10 years is uh, uh, a new era of uh, technological innovation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, particularly in the last uh, couple of years, uh, I think you know ChatGPT is a key milestone. And obviously, right now we have uh, you know DeepSeek that uh, hugely democratized uh, uh, AI uh, technology and also you know, applications. Um, so I, I think you know AI is uh, at a stage of uh, internet back in '98, '99. There's a lot of uh, potential. There's also some bubble. Uh, but you know, there's a lot more opportunities uh, than uh, challenges, but in a, in a much bigger scale. And this is uh, probably two orders or three orders of magnitude larger than internet uh, itself. So that's why it's so, super, uh, super exciting. You mean in terms of the way it is transforming everything or in terms of the business model is likely to create it as a result of the wealth that's going to be created? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything, that's right. <laughs> well, in terms of uh, uh, just the nature of technology, right, and the, how it's transformed the industry, create a new industry, yeah. uh, and also, of course, uh, the new wealth is crazy. Well, if you look at right now, you know, all the top uh, five companies uh, have uh, AI as their, their foundational uh, technology engine. Yeah, in the US, in China, I think you're going to see more companies uh, with uh, AI being uh, the, the engine when to see well, your peers and colleagues, uh, OpenAI, uh, Meta, and the list that goes on, uh, Anthropic. Uh, so what is your takeaway? This is uh, the frontier of, of technology. Mm -hmm. right? uh, so there, you know, to me, there are three major uh, trends. Uh, one is uh, AI is moving from uh, informational AI to physical AI, uh, the ro robotics, time striving to the physical domain. The second trend is uh, AI is moving from uh, generative AI mm -hmm. to agentic AI. You know, everybody's talking about agents. agents right? mm -hmm. The third trend is uh, the scaling law is uh, slowed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's moving from pre-training to inference reasoning in the post-training. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, the rise of deep seek is a phenomenon of that. How do you see the rise of DeepSeek? It's not because I'm a media person coming from China that I want to ask it, but rather many see it as transformative in a way because it's open source, this yeah, approach. Right. And secondly, it's new using uh, mechanic engineering to make a difference. So how do you see this change and what does it mean right. to the current road ahead? DeepSeek is uh, the biggest innovation since ChatGPT. Uh, R1 is uh, just remarkable. It's a huge milestone in the development of AI, and particularly in, in the, in the uh, large, uh, large models. Uh, so it has a, a number of uh, innovations, many dimensional innovations, right? And there's uh, algorithmic innovation, there's a technical innovation, there's uh, a engineering innovation, there's a product innovation. Yeah. There's also a business model innovation yeah. in the sense that you know, it contributes this to the entire world with uh, open source. Yeah. Uh, and essentially it's kind of free. Right? Um, so you know, it is transformative uh, in the sense that uh, the company uh, is able to produce a such a powerful model uh, with, uh, you know, uh, such a such an efficient architecture and a much lower cost. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm particularly happy uh, about Deep Deep uh, Seek is because uh, uh, most of the engineers are young people. They were educated in China uh, and essentially graduated in the last five years, including students from from Tsinghua University. Indeed. Yeah. Overall speaking, almost one third to a half of the engineering talents now spreading in AI companies worldwide are originally or has uh, national origin in China. Right. Of course, they're working in different countries now. So what do you make of this interesting phenomenon as an educator and as a researcher? Right. Uh, indeed, when I was in Silicon Valley, the company I visit, you know, I see a lot of, uh, lot of uh, you know, Chinese students originally from, uh, from mainland China work there. And I, think it's, I think it's great. It's great. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, the students in China 
right, is uh, growing very fast in terms of both the quality and the quantity. Uh, China now, I'm, I'm talking about uh, uh, in, in mainland China, uh, has uh, probably three to four times more AI uh, young talent uh, students uh, than the United States. So I think uh, uh, this is uh, you know, definitely a, an advantage. Uh, obviously, China needs more you know, leaders, uh, need more you know, CTOs with global vision, uh, and, but I think, you know, in terms of just the talent, uh, uh, you know, the breadth, the depths, China is right up there. Yeah. So we talk about AI, yeah, we talk about you know, three things, right? Algorithms, right. Uh, computation, and, and data. Uh, but the most important thing is actually talent. You know, without talent, none of this is possible. I think China has uh, an advantage, uh, you know, especially in the long run, yeah. with the uh, depth and uh, breadth of time. But here comes an interesting part. Uh, in China, we have a huge discussion about the nature of education uh, these days, whether they are up to the task. Uh, and we thought it's not. Uh, and yet, all over the world, you see these young talents. A lot of them are coming from China. So how to reconcile these uh, debates vis-a-vis -vis that reality? Overall, uh, you know, Ch uh, Chinese talents are super smart and, and extremely productive. But obviously, you know, with uh, AI, you know, ChatGPT, DeepSeek has all the knowledge. So our educational system need to be transformed as well. Uh, so first, we need to build a uh, state of art uh, curriculum. <laughs> our, course, our courses uh, need to be updated. And second, we have to use AI itself as a tool in the educational system, in the learning process. Yeah. Right? You know, I, I know there are universities, uh, there are research institutes, they don't like people to use AI. Yeah. You know, I'm a big fan of AI uh, tool and, and the use in all the scenarios. Mm -hmm. you know, our young kids, our young generation grew up with AI. So it's a part of uh, you know, their uh, living ecosystem. Right. So the future intelligence is a collection of uh, human intelligence and uh, artificial intelligence. It's HI times AI. Yeah. So we need to live and, and the breath and thrive in the new AI. You have been advocating the values of AI needs to be in alignment with the human value. Yes. Uh, when it comes to uh, cooperation internationally, it should be the same as well. Uh, but how much is it happening right now? <laughs> Professor Zhang, I, I'm humble to ask you, but it seems that the answer is not very satisfactory. Obviously, the power of AI multiplies, right? and, and so does the risks, uh, especially when we're moving from informational AI to physical AI, right? moving to agency and, and then moving into uh, widespread applications. Um, and you know there has been some good progress uh, in terms of uh, uh, research uh, alignment, uh, but also there are some setbacks. Right? You know, there are uh, some countries they don't want to collaborate. Uh, but I think uh, in the long term, uh, it is critical for uh, China and other countries to work together. Uh, in first, of course, in areas of. Uh, a common interests, you know, like climate, uh, and health, uh, and uh, overall AI safety. Uh, and you know, in, the, in the meantime, we just uh, need to invest more. And I've been asking the government uh, and the companies uh, to invest uh, at least 10 percent of uh, their budget, uh, of the AI budget, mm -hmm. in the AI safety alignment uh, and, and, and uh, uh, governance. Value. Yeah. Governance, yes, yeah. that's right. When you talk about that to your peers uh, while you are making the trip to different uh, uh, important uh, AI entities in the US, uh, what do they have to say from the industry? Right, I think most of them have uh, awareness. They're already beginning to build the AI safety model mm -hmm. into their product development process, mm -hmm. right? But that, you know, it's not even, it's not evenly distributed. It's uh, some companies do better than others. Uh, I think it's, it's natural. Uh, and, and also I'm glad to see uh, you know, different countries come together, uh, begin to advocate uh, for a global collaboration. 
uh, you know, this is something I've been uh, you've been working very, on, yes. working on, you know, be vocal. Having said that, though, what about the business model? Uh, you, you talk about uh, in a way it represents uh, it resembles what happened uh, 30 years ago, right. internet boom. Right. But uh, it took a while to find the business model then, isn't it? Because you were fully participating that's during right, that period right. of time. Yeah. Now, do you see similar road or similar frequency? Uh, yes, uh, by and large. If you look at the uh, internet you know, 30 years ago, the companies who initially made money were the companies selling servers, routers, and, and the physical infrastructure. And it took a few years for companies to, uh, to, get, to, to make profit, to find business from applications. Right. Uh, same thing for, for AI. AI right now, the company who make money are the uh, NVIDIAs, right, you know, <laughs> making chips. Uh, the company who are making uh, you know, data centers uh, provide those uh, basic infrastructure. Once those infrastructure is built, right, then there will be many applications that's able to uh, get revenue and eventually uh, realize profit. In between, there will be some imbalance. Uh, you know, sometimes you probably buy too many chips. You have too much capacity in a data center, uh, and sometimes maybe maybe less. So there will be some imbalance. There will be some some bubble. But in the long run, you know, this industry that is is much larger at scale, and there will be a lot of companies who are able to to have a real business uh, because you know this is real. This is not. Uh, if uh, a, a imaginary thing, it's already happening. It could take years. You are learning about different situations in different parts of the world, China, U.S. included. What about China after Deep Seek? Uh, there comes to the interesting case studies of Manus, which is more about the agent rather than the LNM, uh, and other interesting uh, names. They are very small entrepreneurship, right, uh, of a few dozen people, and yet seem to try to find their way out and set a model. Uh, what do you make of these interesting developments all at the same time? What should we watch? Yeah, well, first of all, there will be a few foundation models, big, you know, horizontal foundation models. In the very beginning, there are 200. Right now, you know, you, you, you probably three to four, right? That, that's converging. Uh, the second thing is uh, you're gonna see uh, you know, hundreds or thousands or, you know, or tens of thousands application on top of that, right? including you know, Manus as agent, it's a brilliant product. But you're going to see a lot of uh, applications thriving uh, as part of the ecosystem, uh, built on top of uh, the big models and, and, uh, and, of course, the physical infrastructure. So this is healthy, and I expect to see a lot of companies like that, including some of the company we spun off, right? the, you know, the AI uh, agent for, for hospitals, mm -hmm. for drug development, uh, autonomous driving, robotics. Uh, uh, but that's a real, the, where the real opportunities are. Right? You, you, not everybody needs to build the horizontal foundation big model, uh, but those are the foundation for uh, companies, especially the small entrepreneurs, uh, to build uh, a, a variety of, uh, of business. There's also a serious issue of disenchantment. As we know, it's very important from technology to real application during this process. Uh, is it really taking place at this moment? Yeah, you know, we are working on uh, different verticals, whether it's a task driving, you know, a hospital, a drug development. Uh, uh, I think it's already, already happening. But uh, overall, you know, people always say the future is here, yeah. but it's unevenly distributed. So you know there will be companies or or, or countries who will benefit first; others will, will follow. Uh, and and again, in the process, there will be there will be bubbles. Uh, you know, there will be companies' investment that that go away. Uh, but as a industry, uh, it, overall, it's going to thrive, uh, thrive. And you know, uh, that's why it's called AI plus, right? That's uh, uh, the new Chinese. Uh, uh, national strategy is AI to enable uh, the entire industry and economy.